Hello, my name is Peter Raymer, and today we're going to look at how to install a package in Microsoft Dynamics 365 for Finance and Operations. Perhaps you've been given a package file and you need to apply it to an environment. Perhaps you have some model files that you'd like to bring into your environment. We're going to look at a few of those different options. Specifically, we're going to look at how to apply a package using LCS, which is the most common um, method and situation that you're going to use. We're also going to look at how to install a package using a command line in a development environment. And then lastly, we're going to look at um, if you have the raw source code, the model files themselves, um, how would you use those in an environment? All right. So let's get started. Right here, I have LCS open, Lifecycle Services. This is just lcs.dynamics.com. Once you're logged in, you can connect to your environment. Um, this would be provided to you either because you created it or um, you were given this information from a client. Um, the next thing that you would do is click on this hamburger button and go to the asset library. Now, I'm not going to go into the details of how you build a package. Um, typically, the life cycle is as a developer, you're going to code away, you're going to check code into source control, then you're going to have a build server build a package in DevOps, you're going to download that package from DevOps, and then re upload it from here uh, into LCS. There's a couple other ways that you can have a package built as well. Um, as, including via Visual Studio. Um, but for now, we're just going to assume you already have a package that you need to bring into the system. So now that we're in this asset library, we can go to the Software Deployable Package tab. And then from within here, we can click the plus button to upload our own um, AX deployable package. So we can give it a name here. And then we can click add file, click browse and find the file where you've downloaded it. Click the upload button and then finally click confirm and that'll upload your AX deployable package. You can see I've already done that here. Um, you usually have to give it a minute until you get this valid checkbox here that ensures that your package um, is a valid package. After we've got it into the asset library, the next step is to actually apply it to our environment. So in this case, um, I'm going to go to my cloud hosted environments um, and show you from there. But typically you wouldn't apply a custom AX deployable package using LCS. You would use one of our other um, two methods that I'll describe next. Typically, um, when you're applying a package using LCS, you're doing that to a test or um, UAT environment. You may take a Microsoft application update and apply it to a development environment in this way. So we can kind of pretend that that's what we're doing here. So I'm going to go to my environment. I'm going to go ahead and click full details so that I can get the main page of my environment. This would be the same if you're using a development environment or a test environment. Then finally, I'm going to click on maintain and I'm going to select apply updates. When I select this, it's going to give me a dialog window. It usually takes a minute to load, but it's going to show me all of my deployable packages that I could apply to this environment. Finally, I can select the package and then click apply. LCS will then service this package and apply it. Um, that could take a couple of hours to do. So I'm going to go ahead and hit cancel. Um, but that is our first way of applying a package to an environment. The next way we can look at is if we actually remote into the development machine itself. And again, you won't be able to do this for a test or UAT or prod environment, um, but you can do this with a cloud hosted development environment. Once we're in this environment, you can actually download the deployable package onto this machine. So I've gone ahead and downloaded that same package and then I've extracted it. And then um, to make it a little easier, I went ahead and I moved this folder 
um, directly onto the C drive. So now I've got my extracted package folder on the C drive. If we look at it, um, you can see that there's an AX update installer application. If we were to look in this AOS service folder, there would actually be some packages that we can apply. Very often, if you're working with a third party company, they're going to give you a package that does not contain the source code in which case they're, they're going to give you a package like this that you would need to either apply using LCS or using the command line like this. Um, the advantage of using the command line is that there is some advanced troubleshooting steps that you can do via the command line, um, but typically using LCS uh, is just fine. All right, so if we go to Windows Start, I'm going to type in CMD to open a command prompt. I'm going to right click and say run as administrator. The next thing that I need to do is change directory to go into this folder where I have my changes. So I'm going to type CD space and then to paste the uh, file path that I just copied, I'm going to actually uh, right click and it pastes in my new um, path. And then I can click enter. The next thing that I need to do is actually run the um, install steps. And this is where I'll link this uh, in, in the description. But Microsoft has some documentation that explains what the console steps are. In this case, it's um, the text AX update installer.exe space dev install. We can type that in and again the system's going to look at and run this AX update installer and it's going to go ahead and do all the steps needed of applying the package. The advantage of applying a package either via LCS or this command prompt is the system's going to update the code in your Microsoft Dynamics 365 environment, but it's also going to run scripts to you know update the database and anything else it needs to do to make sure the environment's fully up to date. Okay, um, so that's our really our second option. The last option I wanted to talk to you about is what happens if you have the raw source code and you want to be able to bring it into your environment, but still be able to see that this source code the, the same way. Um, and maybe you're working with a development environment. Well, a very common scenario is you might be a developer, you are writing code, you're checking your code into source control, and you want another development environment or another developer to be able to sync that code down to their environment and see and run your latest code. Um, that's kind of the scenario that we're talking about. So first, before we get into that, let me show you a little bit of background information that'll help. Um, if we go to Windows Start and I type in IIS, I can see this application called Internet Information Services IIS Manager. This is gonna show us the AOS service website where the D365 website is housed. So if I expand this node and I expand sites, I can see this site called AOS service. And under AOS service, um, I can right click and select explore. Under explore, I can actually, uh, it's gonna take me to the folder where these files are stored. So at the end of the day, the D365 website is what you'd expect, a website with files that run it. If we actually go up one folder, there is this folder called Packages Local Directory. And we can go in that folder, and this folder contains all of the models um, that are part of this system. You may recognize all of these as these base Microsoft models. Well, one of the cool things that we can do is we can actually copy in our model it, that we have, a custom model. So in this case, I've got a model um, that is named, um, I'll go to my downloads folder. I've got a, a model named Dynamics 365 Musings that I've already created uh, using a past video. I can actually just copy that into this folder and I actually already have. 
So it's now here, and if you have your own custom model, you can copy that. Maybe you've been given a model, you can copy that directly into this folder. This folder is the one that's typically hooked up to source control. You would then want to go into Visual Studio, go to your parent folder, right click on it, and say add files to source control to make sure that this folder and everything in it gets added to source control. Uh, there's a few details that are common to every model. There's a descriptor folder with a descriptor file. This kind of describes what the model is and what references exist. The bin folder can contain um, DLLs and other references. If you um, have a third party model that was fully compiled, um, then all of the source code is going to end up being DLLs in this bin folder. But if you've created your own model with the raw source code or you've been given a model with the raw source code, you can actually go into this subfolder, which is going to be named the same as your model. So in my case, my model's named Dynamics 365 Musings. And so I've got another folder underneath it called Dynamics 365 Musings. In here, it's actually really interesting. There is a folder for every single type of object in the system. So I can see an AX form, an AX class, an AX table um, is gonna be down here as well. So the system generates a folder. They're all gonna start out as being empty folders, but as you fill things in, um, they will get populated with XML files that contain your code or your definition of your table or form. So it is nice to know that these are just XML files. And if we actually open these files, we can see that this is where the code exists. Um, there's some XML tags that uh, kind of indicate um, how the, the code needs to exist within these files for the system to read it, but it is just the raw code um, at the end of the day if you've got a model um, that you created. Um, so that's really interesting. It means that we can actually search these files using a search tool. Um, we can update these files directly. Um, it's not really recommended that you would update these manually, but it, it's important to understand that you could. Typically, you've got source control hooked up to this folder. And so when you're doing a get latest or a pull on your source code, the system's gonna pull down and update these files in this location. And that's how a typical developer is gonna work. Um, but if you were curious to know, hey, what's different about two versions, you could compare these files directly. Um, if you needed to, you could move files from one place to another manually if you really needed to. Again, it's highly recommended you use source control to help um, with that process. Okay, so um, now that we, you've given some background, again, we can, if we have our own model, we can copy it into this folder. If we have our own code files that we'd like to add to an existing model, we can actually just drop them into the appropriate folder. It's really important that we move it into the correct folder in order for the system um, to see it. But now that we have our model in place, there's a few key pieces that you need to know to make sure that your code's functioning after you copy raw source code like this. If we open Visual Studio and we go to Extensions, Dynamics 365, we really need to, at first, go to Model Management and Refresh Models. Selecting Refresh Models will cause the system to look for this new model in our packages local directory and, and then be aware of it. If we don't do this, then it's our objects are not gonna show up in the application explorer. It's not gonna show up in these other context menus. After we've done that, we can actually go back to extension Dynamics 365 and then build models. And once we've uh, done the refresh of the models, we will actually see our new model folder show up in here. We can then just check this one checkbox um, and click build to compile our code. But before we do that, we should go over to the options menu and check this checkbox, synchronize database. 
then you can click build. What this is going to do is it's going to build and compile all your code, make sure all of that new code compiles successfully. Um, it's also going to synchronize any table or view changes to the database. Without doing this, um, the new fields or tables that you've added through those files won't actually appear in the database and you'll get SQL errors um, when you try to run it. So it's really important that we synchronize the database and we build uh, this model as well. This is really necessary for when you're moving over a model for the very first time um, in its entirety. Once you have a model, technically using source control or manually, you can move files into this folder. Um, and then um, again, if they are table or view um, files, files that um, will change the database. It is important that they get compiled and synchronized, but now you really have a couple different options. You can still do a full build of the model and synchronize, which is definitely recommended, or you can come in the system, you can create a new uh, finance and operations project. You can right click on the project and select properties. You can make sure that your model is set um, to the model you're going to be working with. You can set the synchronized database on build property to true. And then you can go in the application explorer, find maybe your one or two new objects, add them to your project, and then build this project. This will also um, compile the code and synchronize those objects. The advantage of doing it this way is that you might save a little bit of time if you're just working with a couple objects or making a couple change is, but if you've done a get latest from source control, there's a good chance that you don't know the full list of objects that have changed. And so then it's highly recommended you do do a build through this dialog box here to make sure that all your code has been built and synchronized. All right, so in this article we and video, we've learned how to um, install and apply a package using LCS. Um, that's really your most common method for applying packages, both Microsoft packages for development environments as well as um, test and prod and custom environments for test and prod. And then we looked at how to install a package using a command line. Um, that's less common, but it's still interesting to know how you can do that for custom packages um, in a development environment. You shouldn't do that for the base Microsoft packages in a development environment. Okay, and then lastly, we looked at the model structure and found that um, behind the scenes, this D365 website is indeed just a website with files, and those files can be updated via source control or manually. And then we looked at what are the steps really needed to make sure that the system um, is fully updated uh, with your changes. Okay, thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate you watching. If you like the video, click the like button. I also invite you to push the subscribe button as well. If there's other topics you would like to see a video on, please post in the comments and I'll see what I can do. I hope you learned something new today. Thank you.